Tennessee is a great state for sports fans. We've got our own NFL football team, the Titans, my personal favorite. Almost everybody loves the balls. Hockey fans have the Predators to root for. Oh, and then there's the Nashville Roller Girls. Oh, you never seen them? Well, you're about to as Gretchen Bates suits up for a sport that's not for the faint of heart. There was maybe one or two moments during training where I was like, mm, this is this a good idea? Is this, am I gonna like kill myself? But no, it's so fun, that's all you're thinking about. The fun that Deja Brandeis is referring to might be considered a bit intense for some, but that's just how these ladies roll. Meet the Nashville Roller Girls, sugar and spice, heavy on the spice but they really are nice. When people started to find out, it was like, wow, you don't look mean enough, or you don't look big enough, or I thought you were so nice. Roller Girls President Jennifer Smith, like all the members of the Women's Flat Track Derby Association, takes the bumps and bruises in stride, but it's been a lot harder overcoming the sport's checkered past. Well, you know what, I'm a nice person. I'm a nice person here, I'm a nice person at Derby too, but I'm really focused on what I'm doing at work. I'm really focused on what I'm doing at Derby too, just in a different, slightly different way. As far as misconceptions, always somebody saw it when they were a kid, and that's cool, but it's really different now, and I think it's, it's much more professional, it's much more above board and family friendly. The proof of that friendliness is in the fans, all kinds of fans, who battle similar misconceptions. I think there's a lot of stereotypes out there about who actually comes and watches this, but actually there's a little bit of everybody. I know a lot of my friends that I've told about it, they're like, oh, only certain people go to that, and it's not true. Everybody's here. And like the fans, the Roller Girls hail from a wide variety of backgrounds. Um, there really isn't one type of person who gets into roller derby. Professional type women, we have a CFO, I'm myself, I'm the head of the film department at the Art Institute. We have stay-at-home moms, we have bartenders, we have everybody you can imagine. All shapes and sizes from all different backgrounds and we all just sort of mesh together. More like mash together. So it's obvious, often painfully obvious, that this is a contact sport. But there is a method to the madness. Jennifer gave us a crash course in roller derby rules. The jammer actually is the physical person that scores the points, and there's one on each team at a time. And on the track, they're lapping the pack, which is either trying to help her or hinder her, depending on whether they're on her team or not. And the first pass is to establish control over that jam. So you do that by becoming lead jammer, and that jammer can keep the jam going up to two minutes. She can call it off whenever it's most advantageous to her team. On the second and subsequent passes through the pack, the jammer is scoring points for each opposing player that she passes. And her blockers are helping her, and the opposing blockers are trying to stop her. And then there's things like penalties that come into play and clock management. You have different strategies at different points in the game, depending on whether you're winning or you're losing. There are legal zones of engagement and there are legal blocking zones. Um, so for example, um, I can you know, engage someone with a hip and shoulder. It's not okay for me to engage in this manner with my arm away from my body. So kind of like soccer in that aspect of it. It looked like soccer on steroids to me, but I decided to give it a shot and wound up taking one. On the track, the roller girls give as good as they get, but off the track, they give even more. 
For every bout, we select a local charity to work with, and we advertise um, with, with our advertising for the bout. We advertise the charity, and then we also give them money as well. Um, we also do community service um, at least once a quarter where we go out and do something with Hands On Nashville or do something with Nashville Public Television or other things that are kind of meaningful to our league members. Um, it's good to have your face in the community for a lot of reasons, um, but it's also the right thing to do. It's nice that we're able to do that. Um, not everybody has had the fan support that we've had. We're fortunate that we've always had really good support here in Nashville. We hope that continues because it lets us do a lot of other really cool things for Nashville. You cannot have more fun in Nashville for the price of our ticket. You just can't. It's a good time, it is family friendly, we do like go to great lengths to make it that way. It's exciting, I mean it's, it gets your adrenaline pumping, it makes me want to do it actually. <laughs> if somebody wanted to get involved but were nervous about it, I would just tell them that I was too. I, I looked at it and I went, oh, I wish I had the guts to do that, but you do, you just have to try it. Come down for a great time because it's a blast. Yeah. These girls put their heart and soul into this and I love it.